presence? Yes, it is. We don't take it lightly. Oh, God. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your precious Lord. I taste it and
welcome ladies. It's ladies night. I need you to start liking. I need you to start sharing. And I need you to tag. I need you to like. I need you to share. I need you to tag. Lord, we welcome you in this place right now. We welcome you right now. Ladies, I need you to make sure you share this on your page. Share this to your favorite group. But I need you to tag nine. We're going to invite nine to the nine on tonight. It's ladies night. You already know what to do. Throw up some hearts if you're ready for WO9 Bible study on tonight. But don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. And don't forget to tag. Amen. Amen. I need you guys to make sure you like, share, and tag. It is ladies night. Yes, yes. Keep throwing up those hearts on tonight. If you're ready for the word, I want you to throw up some hearts, and I want you to type in the comments, I'm ready. To all those who are on our conference line tonight, welcome to WL9 Bible Study, and I hope you are ready for a powerful, um, impactful word on tonight. We are going to get into this in just a moment, but I just need you to remember one thing. I need you to like, I need you to share, and I need you to tag. Don't forget to invite nine to the nine. Keep throwing up those hearts for me tonight, okay? Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Thank you, Lord. Keep liking, keep sharing, keep tagging. I see you guys in here. You guys are doing your thing on tonight. Welcome, Sister Linda Johnson. Hello. Sister Beverly. Hi, how you doing? Jacqueline McKinney. Welcome. Welcome to W09 on tonight. Halia. Hey, girl, how you doing? Sister KT. It's ladies night. Yes, yeah. Sister Arnaud. Welcome to W09 on tonight. I need you to like. I need you to share. I need you to tag. Sister Lisa, I see you. Hello, how you doing? All right, I need you guys to like. I want you to share. I want you to tag. I want you to throw up some hearts. Sister Christine Nails, it's good to see you on tonight. Sister Cheeks, it's so good to see you on tonight. Welcome to W09 on tonight. Amen, amen. Continue to like, continue to share, continue to tag. Sister McGill, it's nice to see you on tonight. Sister Lorian, welcome back to W09. And we're going to get started here in a moment. Uh, we're going to open up with a quick word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you on tonight, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name once again. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to go virtual, to be able to reach the masses, oh God. Now, God, I ask on tonight that you settle in this place and do exactly what you do when you settle in the room, oh Lord. Lord, remove all fear, remove all nervousness, Lord. And Lord, let me be able to convey the message as just the way you gave it to me. Now, remove Stephanie and fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Now, God, I ask you to continue to bless every woman that is on the line tonight, whether she's on the line by conference or by Facebook Live, Lord. Remind her that she lacks nothing in this season and seasons going forward, oh God. Now, God, let us re receive your word. Let us believe it. Let us digest it, Lord, and let us be able to take it out to a dying world. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ladies, are you ready for tonight? Just a reminder, last week was really good, right? It was good to me. I don't know about you, but all week I've been saying the same thing, and that's going to be our mantra for the rest of 2020. I lack nothing. If you lack nothing, I want you to throw that in the comments. If you are on the conference line, I want you to yell out, I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our Bible study on tonight. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 8. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 8. Hey, I see you ladies. You guys are still in here, and you still are saying, I lack nothing. Yes, I lack nothing. We lack nothing. So I want you to turn in your Bibles with me tonight. We're going to go to 1 Samuel Chapter 30, and we're going to be studying verses 1 through 8 on tonight. And it says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there, from small to great. 
they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept. They had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Anaham the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed. David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. David strengthened himself in the Lord. Then David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Without fail, recover all. Um, I want to talk to you guys tonight about God's plan. Even when it hurts. And what to do when you are pursuing God's plan, even when it hurts. Now, you guys know I don't mind sharing stories from my life and all that good stuff. But I, I can uh, vividly remember some things from my childhood pretty well. And if my mom's on tonight, she might remember this too. But as a kid, you know, uh, she used to take us. We had to go for our normal checkups, our normal shots, and um, get our vaccinations. And I remember I hated going because as a child, who wants to get a shot, right? So I remember going on this particular time because it was time to get our shot. She had pulled out the yellow little card, as you know, your immunization record. She had pulled out the card. We knew it was time to go get our shots, me and my brother. And so we get there, and we're waiting, and you see other kids around, and you hear kids crying. So now you're really fearful. But we get in the, the room with the nurse. And, you know, she pulls out that long needle. And you're like, I don't want to do I don't want to do this. Your body tenses up and everything. And I remember my mom having to come and talk to me and to talk me through it and hold my hand and kind of almost pin me down, too, so the lady could give me my shot. And in my mind, you know, I'm a kid, and I'm like, why, why my mother, my one and only mother, the one who loves me so dearly, would allow a stranger to hurt me? Why would she allow someone to hurt me with this needle? But it wasn't until, you know, I became an adult and I had my own child that I, my perspective changed and I understood that it was only temporary pain for a long-term plan. That it was only temporary pain for a long-term plan. Um, when I took Chloe to get her first vaccinations, I was fearful of the pain that she would she would experience. But I knew it would be temporary, but for her, I knew she wouldn't. And it was, again, temporary pain for a long-term situation, which I started thinking. I was like, well, you know what? God it, God has a plan for us, and it's a long-term plan. And all the, sometimes we don't understand it. You know, we don't understand what his will is for us, but we go ahead and we pursue that plan. But we think that there shouldn't be any hurt. There shouldn't be any pain. But sometimes it's a part of God's plan for us to experience some temporary pain for a long-term plan. Some temporary pain for a long-term pain plan. I don't want somebody to type it in the comments. It's just temporary. It's just temporary. It's just temporary pain for a long-term plan. So tonight, again, we're going to be talking about God's plan, but what to do when God's plan hurts, even when it hurts. What can we do? And so I've been reading this book by Priscilla Shire called He's Able, and I found this passage of scripture that we're studying on tonight that she referenced, and I started reading it more, and I thought about it, uh, even even when it hurt, there's a plan, but sometimes there's going to be some pain. But what I saw in the scripture is that David, no, he's not a perfect man, excuse me, man, but he's able to give us some points on how we deal with the hurt, even when we're pursuing God's plan. So we're going to talk about that tonight on how we can deal with the hurt even when we're pursuing God's plan. 
So I want to go back to the scripture because it says here in verse uh, verse one, we'll 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 go we'll get into this really quick. And it says that now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there. From small to great, they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. This is verse 4. You got all these men together. I mean, some strong men, right? And they're crying. And that brings us to our first point tonight. Even when you're pursuing God's plan and it's hurting, you have to be able to process the pain. Okay? It says, he says that these are grown men. Because remember, the context of this is that David and his men, they were just rejected by the Philistines. And they were told to go back. They were like, hey, you don't have to fight this fight right here. You know, you can go ahead and go back to your land because you have been good. You have been faithful to Saul. So this is one fight that you and your men don't have to don't have to fight. So they were sent back. And when they get back, their city is burned. Someone has invaded their city. They have invaded the city. They have burned it down. Similar to some of the things we've been seeing on the news lately. Things have been burning and people were taken captive. Their wives and their daughters and their son. So this whole army, they're sitting around and looking at everything. And the text says that these men, these strong men, these warriors, they are crying. And so tonight we're going to talk about processing the pain. They were strong. These were some masculine brothers that was crying. And they didn't just cry. It, it wasn't just like that one singular tear. You know how men say, you know what, I'm not going to cry. They'll have that one tear that come out. I guess they call it that, that, like, like that one little thug tear. It wasn't nothing like that. These, it's, the text says that they weeped and they cried. And they kept crying until they couldn't cry anymore. They cried until they didn't have any more energy. And listen, if you are going to accomplish God's plan, you must be emotionally healthy. That's what processing the pain means. You got to be emotionally healthy. That means that your total health has to be good. Your total health is not just you being physically and spiritually healthy, but it also means that you have to be emotionally healthy. And if anybody if you have ever had a conversation with me, you know I will tell you right away that it is okay to go talk to a therapist. It is okay to go and seek a psychiatrist. You can do that because God wants you to be emotionally healthy. Because when you're pursuing his plan, there's going to be some moments where there's going to be some temporary pain there's going to be some hurt and you're going to want to not be able to keep pursuing you're going to want to give up but God says you got to process this pain and I need you to be emotionally healthy while you're doing this and in order to be healthy you got to be healthy in all three of these aspects physically spiritually and emotionally and part of emotional health is that I've learned is that uh we have to grieve when things hurt us we have to these men, they, it said they wept. They cried until they couldn't cry anymore. They were grieving at the loss of their city, at the loss of their loved ones. They had to cry and weep until they couldn't cry anymore. And I found out that sometimes, like, it really gets on my nerves when people say, hey, stop out there crying. What you crying for? Why are you crying? What you crying for? Wipe those tears up. You don't need to be crying. Uh, I, I, I was... I, when I think of that, I think of there's only two reasons why people really say that. Number one, either you're selfish or you're just ignorant. And when I say selfish, it's because sometimes people say, I don't want you to cry because it's going to make me cry. It's going to make me uncomfortable. And what I found is that sometimes your discomfort will make someone else uncomfortable because they still haven't processed their pain as well. They're not emotionally healthy. And for those others... They don't understand that your tears are actually a gift of God, gift from God, so that you can cleanse your soul. God wants you to cry. He wants you to grieve. He wants you to get it out. Uh, those tears, it's not anything bad for you to cry. And maybe some of them grew up in a home where, you know, it wasn't, they weren't, they were told, don't cry. They just don't understand that God, again, gave us those tears so that we can deal with our grief deal with our pain, deal with our hurt in a healthy way. 
or maybe they again are just selfish so I'm not telling I'm telling you tonight it is okay it is okay to cry God gave us grief and everybody grieves differently and at their own pace and the text tells us that they cried and they cried and they cried until they couldn't cry no more until they couldn't cry no more and everybody does it at a different pace and everybody has to do it their own way but what I've learned is that if it hurts the most unhealthy thing you can do is act like it doesn't hurt so you got to process this this pain when you're going through pursuing God's plan and you're like Lord what is this pain for why does it hurt I'm trying to pursue your will but you keep these things these obstacles keep coming my way these hurdles keep coming my way and every, it seems like everybody's always trying to defeat me and take me down and you have to process that pain if you are going to accomplish God's plan you must be emotionally healthy and you have to know it's okay to cry. Why? Because you cannot fight and you cannot cry at the same time. It's like um, it's like if you if you bleed, it's like if someone cuts you and you bleed, then you're that means you're healthy. But if you don't bleed, that means there's a problem. So if you never cry or if you never process your pain, that means you're a problem and you need to go see a doctor right away. You need to go see a doctor right away. So again, you cannot fight and you cannot cry at the same time. And here's why you have to process that pain. Because later in this chapter, uh, in verse 30, and I, and I want you to read further on your own after verse 8. David and these men are going to have to fight. So they had to cry until they couldn't cry no more. They had to go ahead and process this pain but because you, you cannot fight and you cannot cry at the same time. And I just want you to bear with me for a sec so I can make, really get this across so you'll understand. Some of us have been struggling and some of us have felt like we have lost the fight because we didn't get the emotional handle first before we went into the fight. And it reminded me of some times where I have said some things to some loved ones, not out of love. And I came back later and wished I had, could have took it back. Wish I could have replayed the whole situation over again. But when I went into that situation, I was dealing with my emotions and not my mind. I was dealing with my emotions and not my mind. And sometimes you're going to wish you could take it back all over again. That's why it's important for you to what? to cry before you go into a fight. You cannot fight and you cannot cry at the same time. David and these men had to go ahead and process the pain that they were going through because later on God was going to take them through a situation where they were going to have to fight. And again, you cannot fight and you cannot cry at the same time. I need somebody to put that in the comments on tonight. I cannot fight and I cannot cry at the same time. You have to process this pain before you go into the fight. And some, some of y'all, some, some women are asking themselves like right now that, you know, basically sometimes that's why your husband or your significant other may not be talking to you because he don't, it's not that he doesn't like you, but it's that because you haven't handled the emotion yet. You're not ready to communicate yet because you're still crying. You're still processing the pain. You don't know how to communicate without emotion because you haven't processed the pain. And that's not, not just a woman thing. That's a man thing too. But God says you got to process the pain first. First, I need you to know that understand that it is okay to cry. And in, uh, in order to accomplish my plan, you are going to have to be emotionally healthy because you cannot fight and cry at the same time. Second point tonight, you got to pick yourself up. When you're going through hurt and pain, when you're pursuing God's plan, God wants you to pick yourself up. He said, uh, uh, it says here in the text um, that David, he cried and he cried and could he, till he couldn't cry anymore. These men, they cried and they cried till they couldn't cry anymore. And it says, when we go down to verse 6, it says, Now David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So here's what happens. Sometimes the people that you feel like would be there for you the most when you're going through a situation. See, David was distressed. These men, he had been leading them. These are the same men that he had been leading, the same men that he had put so much investment in. And in his moment of distress, instead of being able to lean on them, because they're going through, going through something themselves, 
He can't. Instead, they're like, I'm going to, let's just stone you. Because if we hadn't been gone, we would have been here to protect our city, to protect our people. And these are the same people, again, that David is leading. The same people that David is leading. And these are the people that he has invested in for several months of his life. And I don't think that David was as distressed as his about his issues as he was about the people that he thought would be there to strengthen him. The people he thought would be there to lift him up. Because they were not and were not able to do it. And isn't it the worst pain that, that, you know, not that you're going through pain, but the people you thought would be there to help you through it, going through their, are going through their own stuff and you can't even depend on them? Because these are the same group of people that he actually led out of defeat into victory. Okay? These are the same people that they had no place to go, but he brought them to Ziklag and he helped them to establish a home. These are the same people, again, that he invested in. And in his distress, he can't even depend on them. And I feel like I just have to encourage somebody on tonight is that if you are in a leadership position, whoever's on the line is in a leadership position. If you're leading people, you're the leader in your home, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Because sometimes the same people that you thought would be able to pick you up are not going to be there. You're going to have to pick up the pieces all on your own. Don't take it personal. Don't take it personal when those same people, just like with David, wanted to attack him. When they want to attack you, don't take it personal. Because a lot of times the reason why they're upset with you is because they got an issue all of their own. It has nothing to do with you, but it has all the, all the reason to do with them. Okay, so don't take it personal. Watch what the text says. It says they wanted to stone him because they were bitter in their souls. They were grieving. They were grieving. It ain't got nothing to do with you, but everything to do with the fact that they are bitter. So again, don't take it personal because this is an issue that they're going through on their own. They have their own issues and they needed someone else to blame. So they decided I'm going to blame David, the very person who has picked me up when I needed to be picked up. So they're going to blame somebody else, and it might as well be you, right? So you got to stop taking it personal. I need somebody to take, put that in the comments. Stop taking it personal. You can't take it personal when people want to attack you. You are not responsible for their issues. The Bible says they were not able to help him, so what did he do? He strengthened himself in the Lord. And that's the part I don't want you to miss, because he strengthened himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the, in the Lord. I don't want to give you any false indications that you have the power within yourself to strengthen yourself. I need you to understand that you don't strengthen yourself by your own willpower or your own ability. The Bible says David strengthened himself, but the only way he was able to find the type of strength that he needed to strengthen himself was that he did it through the Lord. He needed God to help him get through this thing. He needed God to pull him through this thing. He needed God to help him get through this thing. The Bible says he strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Now, when I looked up the, the word strengthen, it means to bind together, to possess well, or to pull together. So the text is literally telling us tonight that in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his hurt, because you got to keep in mind, he came back to nothing. His city has been burned down. The wives have been taken. The sons, the daughters, and the very people that he is leading are against him. In the midst of his pain, in the midst of his hurt, God, he was able to strengthen himself in the Lord. David literally pulled himself together in the Lord. And I was, want, I, I was trying to figure out how can I explain how David pulled himself together in the Lord. Now, uh, some uh, my family knows, my family knows this. Now, again, I'm sharing some of my own stories again, is that I love Pixar movies. I love Disney Pixar movies. I think the last movie I saw was Onward, right before the pandemic. And I love them because there's always a great message in there. And I, I, when the kids say, let's go see that, that kind of movie, I'm like, I'm really game for it all the time. But one of my favorite Disney Pixar movies is Toy Story, right? And I was when I was studying this, I was like, David picked himself up. And it reminded me of when they wanted to break out of toy jail. When Woody wanted to break out of toy jail. And they had to put a plan together, y'all. They had to put a plan together. So him, Mr. Potato Head, Buzz Lightyear, and all the other toys trying to figure out, how can we get out of toy jail? 
So Mr. They, the plan was that when Mr. Potato got a chance to go outside, that he would be the one to get them out of jail. So Mr. Potato Head had the opportunity to go out and they had the kids had left him in the sandbox. But when they left him in the sandbox, they left him broken in pieces. And when Woody and Buzz Lightyear saw this, they were like, there's no way we're going to get out of toy jail. There is no way we can get out of toy jail because we can't go out there and help him. We got, we, we, we in jail with our own issue. But later on, when it got dark, y'all, he was in the sandbox by himself, Mr. Potato Head, by himself with one arm attached. And he was, what he did was he took that one arm and he felt around in the sand. And I know somebody's seen this already. He felt around in the sand until he found every part of himself and he pulled himself back together and that's what I'm trying to explain to you tonight. Sometimes you got to pick up all your pieces and pull yourself together. I need somebody to type that in the comments. I'm going to pull myself together. Mr. Potato Head had the opportunity to get pull all his pieces. He literally pulled himself together in order for the plan, the plan, because they had a plan. In order for that plan to work, he had to pull himself together. Somebody type, I'm pulling myself together. I'm pull, I'm, I'm going to pull myself together. I got to pick up these pieces. I got to pull myself together. And I just want to tell you, in order for God's plan to work, you might be in the dark sometimes like Mr. Potato Head. You might be in the sandbox by yourself. It might be cold. It might be lonely. It, it's going to hurt. But guess what? You still got to pull yourself together. You got to strengthen yourself in the Lord and pick yourself up. You got to pull yourself together. You got to pull the pieces together. Because it's going to be some times where you're going to feel disconnected from people. Again, you're going to feel like you are in the dark. You're going to feel like it's lonely. You're going to feel like it's cold. You're going to feel like I have nothing else. There is nothing else worth living for. But guess what you got to do? You got to pick yourself up and you got to pull the pieces together. And remember, don't take it personal when people try to attack you. Because people are going to come for you. And they're going to come for you in this season. They're going to come for you in every season that God has for you when you are pursuing God's plan, when you are pursuing his will for your life. But guess what you got to do? You got to process that pain. You got to get it out the way because you cannot fight and cry at the same time. And you got to pick yourself up and pull those pieces together. You got to strengthen yourself in the Lord. You got to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Somebody say, I got to strengthen myself in the Lord. I'm going to pull myself together. I'm about to pick myself up. So pick yourself up. And then our, it got, we are going into our last point tonight. We have to pray and pursue. Let's look at verse 7 and verse 8. And it says, Then David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring me the ephod, Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Without fail, you will recover all. Okay? So first thing I want to tell you is that you got to pray and you got to pursue and you got to do it in that order. It says here, the first thing it says here is that David told the priest, bring me the ephod, okay? So the ephod, it was a linen garment that the priest would use for times when they would go into intense prayer, purposeful prayer. So David knew what he had to do. So David inquired of the Lord, should I pursue? He went into prayer. He decided, hey, I got to pray about this thing. And it says, and you will recover all. So David knew what he had to do. First, he had to pray. He had to go into some intense prayer, some purposeful prayer. And it said that David went and inquired. He went and prayed and he asked God, Lord, should I pursue? Lord, should I pursue? And he says, yes, you should pursue. And when you do, you will recover it all. And I love that because after he cried as much as he cried, after he processed that pain, after he picked himself up, pulled the pieces together and strengthened himself in the Lord, he looked, he prayed, and then he pursued. And he did it in that order. 
he did it in that order. And that's the thing. The order is important. You got to pray first before you pursue. Because a lot of us go and pursue some things without praying about it first. And it just reminds me. And, I, I, and uh, my sister-in-law, KT, or she don't want me to call that Kenya, Sister Kenya, says all the time that she always asks the Lord for permission before she does anything. And this is even over small things. This was just the other day I had this conversation with her. And she said, I had... I asked the Lord for permission if I could go do this first. And I'm thinking, well, you can go do that. But she said, no, even in even in the smallest thing, I got to ask him for permission. So she prays about it first before she goes and makes a move. And that's what the Lord is saying tonight. When, when you are in my plan, when you're pursuing my plan and it starts to hurt, you got to process that pain. I need you to pick yourself up and strengthen yourself in me. But I need you to pray and ask me before you make the, the next move. Because that's how you're going to get past this hurt. When it feels like it's painful. When it feels like I'm just going through and I don't know if I can really pursue this. These are the points that David is giving us on tonight. He's saying, I had to pray and pursue. I was in a painful painful position, a painful situation. But first I prayed about it and then the Lord told me to pursue he told me, it's okay, you need to move. And some of you, when something is lost or you feel like something is lost, you pursue, but you don't pray. You don't pray about it. You just go and, you just go and start pursuing it. And because you pursue and don't pray, you pursue something God didn't want for you. And now you spend so much time running after something that Satan really didn't take from you. Because we're real good to give Satan some credit and say, the Satan stole everything from me. And you, it's only because you went and pursued something that God never gave you permission to go and have in the first place. So now you're wasting all this energy and all this time running after something that God didn't, didn't get to you. Because you pursued it before you prayed. You have to do it in order. Order really matters. Somebody put in here, order matters. I got to pray before I pursue. And notice the first question he asked in his prayer life. He said, should I even pursue this? Should I even pursue this? And I want to ask you tonight, what have you prayed about that you have not moved on? What have you prayed about that you have not moved on? Because, you know, sometimes we spend our life, our resources, our energy, our time pursuing things, and then when you don't get it, you start praying and blaming God for something you don't have. But what about when you pray for it and God makes it available to you, but you don't act on it? You don't move on it. What have you prayed for or prayed about that you have not moved on? And that's the question I have for you on tonight. What have you prayed about but you didn't move on? What have you prayed about that you didn't move on? Because that's the other side of it. Some of us pray, but we don't pursue. We ask God for it, and but we don't do anything after. So you never recover what God has for you. It said here in the text that, that God told him, he gave him the permission. He said, you will recover it all. You can't recover anything if you're not going to move on it. If you're not going to move on it. God has already, already gave it to you. You can't expect him to do all the work. God said, pursue and you will recover all. And in order for you to get what God has for you, you cannot just sit here. Like, I know the song says, um, the song we sing in church, I when praises go up, blessings come down. And that's a real good song to sing and everything like that. But when you pray about it and you ask God and he says, I will give you what, give it to you. I will recover it all. You got to act on it. You can't expect him to just do everything, okay? He says, you need to act on it. I need you to pray, and I need you to pursue. Somebody put that in the comments. Pray and pursue. I need you to pray and pursue. I need you to pray and pursue. So again, what have you prayed about that you have not moved on? What are you going to do to pursue? Pray. Remember, it's all about the order. Pray and then pursue. And I was just having this conversation when, when pastor asked me, what are you teaching tonight? And I started thinking about praying and pursuing because a lot of times what we do is we, we have, we, we, we do this, uh, we always praying for financial blessings and we say, Lord, will you restore my finances? Lord, will you, will you, um, let me get out of this financial situation. I need financial freedom. And God says, yes, I will give you financial freedom. But you have to act on it. And you don't even take the first steps. You don't even take 
make the decision to put together a financial budget, and then you don't practice the principle of first with tithing. So how do you expect to be in financial freedom? you asking God, you're praying for him to give you something, but you don't act on it. You don't even take the steps to get there. God says if you pray and then you pursue, I will recover all. I will recover all. You got to take the steps. You got to do the work because you can't expect him to do it all. Pray, then pursue. Somebody say, pray, then pursue. Somebody has been praying for a better relationship. You've been praying for your marriage to get better. Uh, I, you got to pray about it, but then you got to pursue it. What are you doing to get those things better? God says, I want to recover it all. This is what you really want. And it's in my will. It's part of my plan. You're hurting right now, but I can recover all of that. But you still have to pursue. I need you to move. And see, I know it hurts, but you don't have, but, but you feel like you don't have to pursue. And there's pain, but you feel like you don't have to pursue. God says, no, pursue. It hurts. Pursue. It's painful. You got to pursue. You, if you want to be a part of God's plan, if you want, if you want the temporary pain, you want to see what's on the other side of the temporary pain, then you are going to have to pray and then you will have to pursue. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be some things that you're going to have to give up. Sometimes it's going to cost you some things, but you're going to have to pray and then you will have to pursue. And I know God's plan hurts sometimes, but you still have to pursue it. I know you got to go through pain. I know you got to go through hurt. There's going to be some difficulty, but nothing that was ever worth, um, and, and nothing that was ever worth anything um, is, is not going to, it's going to cause you some pain sometimes. So in order for you to get what God has for you, it, it's, it's worth something. You got to go through it. You got to go through the pain. You got to go through the hurt. But you got to pursue God's plan anyway. And God says if you would just pray, but in that order, I need you to pray and then pursue. Don't pursue without inquiring of me. See, David put on the ephod. And we knew right away then what he was going to do. He knew what he had to do. He had processed that pain. He had picked himself up. He gathered himself up. And he strengthened himself in the Lord. He said, I'm not going to be looking for others to give me the strength, to give me the encouragement I need. I'm going to give my encouragement through the Lord. He picked himself up. And then he prayed about it. Purposeful prayer. Fervent prayer. And then he, he asked the Lord, should I pursue it? And God says, I will recover it all. I will recover it all. Because there's a promise. There's a promise that God gave us. And I want to read that to you. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses, verses 17. And it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. This is temporary pain that you're feeling right, that you're feeling right now. This is temporary hurt that you're feeling right now. This is temporary difficulty that you are feeling right now. It says it's temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are not seen are not eternal. Remember when I told you it was temporary pain, but there was a long-term plan for my health? I went in for vaccinations, and I was upset with my mother. I was like, why would you do this? You love me so much, but you letting a stranger cause me pain. I had to realize, I had to change my perspective that it was only temporary pain for a long-term plan. God is saying right here, that it says for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. It's temporary, y'all. Somebody put in there, it's temporary. It's only temporary. It is temporary. It was but for a moment. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Listen, there is glory on the other side of this hurt. You cannot see it right now. That's why God says you still got to pray. You still got to pursue. You got to process this pain. Even in my plan, there is going to be some hurt. It's not going to be easy. 
It's not going to be easy. It wasn't meant to be easy. See, when you decide that you're going to uh, pursue God's plan, pursue his will for your life, this is not going to be an easy road. This is not going to be some journey that you're going to hop, skip, and run down a yellow brick road. It does not work like that. There is going to be some pain. But I'm telling you right now, the scripture tells us it's for a moment. It is only temporary because you will see God's glory on the other side of this hurt. You are going to see his glory on the other side of this hurt. So what do I do when God's plan starts to hurt? Because God's plan will hurt. So what do I do? What do I do? I got to process the pain. I got to pick myself up. But then I have to pray and then pursue. God's plan will hurt you. But guess what he said to David? You will recover it all. You will recover it all. I need you to put that in the comments on tonight. I'm recovering it all. See, I told you last week you lack nothing. It's only temporary, right? You lack nothing. I lack nothing. We lack nothing in this season. This is only temporary. You got to keep your perspective that way. You got to keep that mindset. Hey, it's hurting right now. It's hurting right now. And what we see going on amongst us right now every day, I know you're sitting there watching CNN like I am too. This is still God's plan. Hey, y'all, and it's hurting us, right? It's hurting us. We heard the men on Monday night talking about how they feel about it. It's hurting us, but this is part of God's plan. I guarantee you, God says this is only for a moment. You will see my glory on the other side of this hurt. So what do I do when God's plan starts to hurt? Because it's hurting right now. What do I do? What do I do? I got to process the pain. So that means we got to be emotionally healthy. So if you're angry right now about what you see and what you're going through, your situation, your circumstances, and what you see on TV, you process that pain. You cry if you have to. You scream. You go outside and you scream if you have to. But be emotionally healthy so you can think smart with your mind. Okay? And then God says, pick yourself up. Because guess what? We ain't going to be able to lean and depend on everybody. Hey, leaders, out there leading protests, leading movements, if whatever you're doing in your city right now, you ain't going to be able to depend on everybody. But God says if you find strength in me, you will be able to pick yourself up just like Mr. Potato Head did. He found all the pieces and he picked himself up and he was able to continue to pursue the plan so that they could get out of jail. You got to do the same thing. But then don't forget that in everything you do, you must pray. You have to pray. So you got to be purposeful in your prayer. You must have fervent prayer and then you must pursue. Because God says in his word, he said it tonight. The affliction is light, but only for a moment. This affliction that we are going through right now in this pandemic, don't forget the pandemic is still here. Even in the pandemic, even through the situation we're dealing with in black America, this is only for a moment. And that we will see God's glory on the other side of this temporary pain. It is only temporary. So what do I do when God's plan starts to hurt? What do I do? I'm going to process the pain. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to pray and I'm going to pursue. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you on tonight, oh God. We thank you for this opportunity to study your word once again, oh God. Lord, I thank you for being a God of second chances, God, for giving us this opportunity to try to do this all over again, God. I thank you for every woman who is on the line tonight, who is on our conference line, who is on our prayer line on tonight, God. Someone on our line tonight is pursuing your will. They are pursuing your plan, but they feel some hurt. They feel some pain, God. But we are here on tonight to remind them they got to process that pain, that they can pick themselves up, God. And if they, if they pray and pursue, that you will recover it all in this season right now, God. Lord, we thank you. We can't thank you enough, God. We can't thank you enough for all that you've done, oh, Lord. We've searched all over for things, for people, for in, in everything we could for something to compare. But there is no one like you, oh, God. There is no one like you, oh God. There is no one who can fill our voice, God, who can, who can relieve the temporary pain the way that you do, oh God. 
Now, God, on tonight, God, we ask that you, you continue to cover us, God. Cover us as we continue to pursue your will. No, Lord, it is not going to be easy. This journey is not going to be easy. But you said that in your word that you would cover us, you would supply every one of our needs, and that you would give us the strength that we need so that we can endure this race, oh God. Now, God, I ask that you, a special prayer for our men on tonight, God. Continue to cover them, God. Con uh, cover their minds, God. Cover their hearts, God. Cover everything that is a, a, a of them, oh God. And I ask that when they leave their homes, God, they are, they are able to return safely. Now, God, for those who are out there actively pursuing uh, the uh, the rights of our, our culture, God, who are reminding us that we should never forget those names of those men who have lost their lives, like Trayvon Martin, God, George Floyd, Floyd, oh God, uh, Philando, uh, God, I ask that you cover them right now, God. Let them be peaceful. Let them process their, their pain so they, they can get out of their emotions and they can mentally do this in a peaceful way, oh God. Now, Lord, we ask that you continue to cover our leaders, God, starting in our churches, God. Cover our pastors. Cover our pastor, Lord, as he continues to lead us and guide us, God, and strengthen him, God. Give him the knowledge that he needs, God. We know that this is not easy, Lord. We know that this is not easy to lead people from afar, to lead them virtually, Lord, through a pandemic and then through a situation that could continue to escalate, oh, Lord. Now, God, as you continue to cover every pastor across our nation, God, Lord, cover our state officials, our local officials, Lord. Cover our president, God. Cover him right now, God. Lord, I ask that you continue to work on him so that he can start making some sound decisions, God. We don't know what he endures every day, Lord. We don't know what his thought process is, God. But we ask that you cover him right now, God. Now, God, I ask that you continue to bless our women on tonight, God. Bless our single mothers. Bless our married mothers, Lord. Bless our, bless just, just bless our women, Lord. And I ask, God, that you continue to give them the desires of their heart if it's a part of your will, Lord. Now, whoever is hurting on tonight, God, I ask that you enter their heart right now, Lord, and remind them that you are the supplier of, their, of all their needs and that they will not lack nothing in this season, Lord. Lord, we will continue to give you all the honor, all the praise that you are so rightfully deserving of. It is in your name that we pray, O oh Lord. Amen. Thank you, ladies, for joining us for Women of the Nine Bible Study on tonight. Remember uh, what to do when God's plan hurts. You still got to process the pain. You got to pick yourself up and you got to pray and pursue. Don't forget to join us on tomorrow at 7 p.m for our Bible study with our very own Pastor Carter at 7 p.m. Now, also, I want to remind you, uh, get the word out. We're going to be posting in just, a, in just a short while, but we got Pull Up for Pizza at the 9 on tomorrow, okay? From 12 to 1, we're feeding 50 families. And this is not just for the 9, but this is for the community on the north side. So pull up at 12 p.m. and grab you some lunch on us, all right? We, I love you ladies. I, I, I appreciate everything you do. I can continue to pray for you and I ask you continue to pray for me. I thank you for pushing me and for building me and I'm going to keep praying for you. Amen. Oh, uh, one more thing too. Pastor's anniversary is this weekend. We're celebrating three years. Three years in the ministry. So don't forget to come by the church on Saturday. Uh, and Pastor Carter is going to be preaching Sunday in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Okay, so come by, hunk your horn, show some love, show some love to your pastor. Again, it takes a lot to lead people virtually. It takes a lot to do these things right here. And your pastor has been doing it all from sound technician, media man, um, making phone calls, doing it all. So make sure you come by, hunk your horn, and show your love for your pastor on this weekend. Three years of ministry at the historic Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. And don't forget, if you want to sow a seed into the life of Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church, you can do so by Tidely or our cash app, dollar sign, T-H-A, the number 9, M-B-C. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us. I'll see you next Tuesday, and don't forget to invite a girlfriend.
Great and great be to 